I don't know if you're gonna read that, but that's uh, three thirty seconds. And we're gonna use this to remove the uh, roll pin here. And you don't want to push this sucker all the way against the um, the body of the carb. So just a putty knife will help you control that. And then the, um, this little lever is loose. And just set that aside. Uh, next, I'm going to remove the uh, nine screws that hold the uh, horn in place. And just as a side note, it is a good idea to uh, to print out the uh, disassembly and reassembly sequence that I have. Uh, I'm going to post the link on the website. Next, I'm going to remove the uh, air cleaner stud. There's no need to damage that thing. Just two nuts tighten against each other will help you do this very easily. So next I'm gonna remove the uh, choke diaphragm. Next, I'm gonna remove the um, the choke flap lever, and I'm just gonna disconnect it from here. I'm gonna also remove the uh, the lever itself. Okay, so next is the secondary metering rod hanger. Make sure you find the right screwdriver. I want to break that little screw that uh, holds the hanger in place. And then you can lift the uh, hanger with the Metering, metering rods and set those aside. All right, next I'm gonna remove all the air horn screws. There's a total of nine.
by the way, there's a couple inside the um, the choke opening. And there's also a couple more behind this little baffle, this shield here. So again, there's nine of them total. And they're all different lengths. Well, not all of them, but uh, there's a couple of super long ones back here. And uh, you just want to note where where they go, just to make sure they go back in the same order, the same place. And they should be snug, not, not extremely tight. Otherwise, you always risk on on warping the um, the air horn, which is I've heard I haven't seen it, but I've heard that it's not uncommon. These are flathead um, brass screws. There's two of them. The two screws toward the back, at the very back, uh, they're the long ones. Next, we're going to separate the air horn from the body of the quadrajet. And uh, I recently worked on this one, so it shouldn't be. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty loose, but just don't go bananas hitting the thing because you don't want to damage anything, really. And just very carefully. Oh, and one thing, you want to use your putty knife to um, make sure the uh, gasket stays in one piece. I'm going to reuse this one. So. this Lift straight up don't forget that the um, the choke um, rod is still there so be careful with that so it doesn't you know, kind of make removal of the horn harder and then this is the uh, accelerator pump leave some of the parts in there there's there's no need since I'm gonna just gonna work on uh, the, the body here I, I don't need to separate the whole thing so so far that is all that's necessary I want to remove the uh, gasket and this is an area that I, I, I really don't understand why people have so much trouble with it I've seen them torn here there's no need for that 
you just have to be careful and work with it, not against it. And uh, basically just bend and fold a little bit and work the thing off of the, um, the horn carefully without tearing it. And then it just, it slides out of there and it's in perfect shape. So again, I'm gonna reuse this one because there's nothing wrong with it. I got carb, I was very careful uh, not to spill any gas just because I don't like cleaning gasoline. And uh, anyway, I haven't started the car in several days and I wanted to show you the, um, there should be fuel in there and uh, there's none. So there is a little bit here in this cup and I think that is because of what I'm gonna replace here. And I'll show you in a minute. The, um, the needle seed, and I've done a lot of reading. And again, this is just my, my, my views on, on this. This, guy, this carburetor has or had, and it still has the window um, needle seed. And I'm gonna go ahead and replace that with a solid one. And the reason being is because I don't want to have gasoline from the bowl just going back out down the line. I, I think that makes it um, hard to start the car and also tough to um, restart the car when it's, when it's hot. Um, I don't have any proof of that. I'm just kind of sort of experimenting, but that's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, and I'm also going to use the, um, the little clip for the needle. Uh, I figure at the end of the day, these things were designed by engineers. I am not an engineer, so I'm not going to be reinventing the wheel here. I'm just going to set it back to what it was originally or as close as I can uh, originally from the factory. So that's my, my take on it. Uh, next, I'm going to remove the uh, primary metering rods along with the, with the power piston. And there's a little spring inside. And there's also a little, I don't know if you can see that or not, it's kind of hard to film sometimes these things, but there's a little wire. I keep everything connected. It's not difficult really to reinstall the, the wire, but why create more work for yourself? You don't have to. And then we can take this little shield, baffle, whatever you want to call it. It's just a little plastic thing. Again, I still have the springs in here. I don't think that's going to matter. Next, we can just remove the, um, the float. Okay, so next I'm going to remove the needle from the seat. That's the needle. Next, I'm going to remove the seat itself and you want to find a big flat screwdriver and carefully unscrew the needle seat from the body. And this is the, the one with the, with the windows, as you can see. And I'll make a comparison side by side in a sec. And also very important, there is a little, I don't know if it's a, if it's um, a washer or a, a gasket or both, but anyway, that is important when you do, when you uh, reinstall the, uh, 
a needle seat. So, I have a new one here. This is from the AC Delco rebuild kit, which I think is, is the best. I know there's other good ones out there, but try to stick with stick with the with the Delco products when I can. Again, I'm trying, you know, to stop reinventing the wheel when it comes to certain things. Anyways. <laughs> Here's a side by side of the um, of the needle seats. As you can see, one has the two openings or windows. This one is solid. And again, from what I've read, these were the ones that were used in later years. And they, again, because of the lack of the um, of the windows, they keep or they help, I should say, keep fuel in the bowl so again i'm just i'm just going to try this one and, and see what uh, what happens and the kit i like the delco kit because it comes with pretty much everything uh, the only thing that it's it's not included is the uh a new uh float but it has the um little hanger and the washer and the new needle so What's next? I know this is gonna be almost impossible to to um, to film, but I have the little hanger. Be very careful; these things are just tiny, and uh, the needle. And this hanger is just supposed to kind of snap in there. And there it is. And then, of course, how it is hung from the from the um, float is very important. Again, this thing has a little bit of a half moon shape here at the end. And the, um, the hanger is supposed to kind of just kind of sit there and actually pivot a little bit if, if need be. Do not try to use these holes, or do not use these holes to uh, hang the um, the needle. It'll just bind. So next, I'm gonna drop this little gasket in place here carefully. Try to get it into position. Followed by the by the new um, needle seat. Then just get it started, making sure the little gasket is still in place. Just take your time. Good, you have a flashlight also handy. Yeah, that looks that looks really good. And next I'm gonna just snug it a little bit. That's it. Um, these things are not holding the engine in place, so there's no need to go crazy with over tightening things. One thing I wanted, I wanted to point out is there's a lot of discussion and numbers being thrown out there about the uh, the adjustment for the uh, for the float level, which is important. I understand, and those numbers can range from five sixteens to what's it saying here, fifteen thirty seconds, and um, again. Going to the um, instruction worksheet that came with the uh, kit. If I go looking here for 
And, and one thing that I, I wanted to mention is you need to know how to identify your carburetor, and that's done by numbers. And the Quadrajet will have, this is the, uh, the throttle here, the accelerator. Um, the numbers of the carburetor are stamped here on the side. So it is very important that you write down those numbers because some of these measurements are going to differ if your car is an automatic or a manual. I'm, I'm guessing they're going to be different or based on the year. So you want to go back to the uh, worksheet and locate the, uh, the numbers that are recommended for your carburetor. In my case, based on the year, minus 76. And I just lost my place here. Okay, here we go. 75 through 77. And it's uh, 1705 minus uh, 6207. So here you see the um, 1705s. 05, 62, 03, 207, 503, and the 507 minus the 207. So for this carburetor, it is recommended a 13, 13, 30 seconds as far as the um, float level. Again, this is, <laughs> you do whatever you want to do, but I'm going to just follow these uh, instructions especially considering that I went with the, um, with the solid, with the window less, if you would, um, needle seat. So I wanted to um, point that out. And by the way, these uh, floats, let's see if I can get focus here. These are um, adjustable. They have a little V cut out here as part of the assembly, right here on the arm, and you bend them accordingly until you get the right level, which I will address in a second. And this I'm doing to the best of my ability. I, I've tried to collect as much information as I can. Some of it is very vague. Some is pretty decent, but again, I'm just doing my best to, um, to have mine tuned to the best of my ability. I'm not saying that what I'm doing is 100% correct, okay? Just wanted to point that out. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to um, put the float and needle back in place, and I just drop the needle. It'll happen plenty of times. So just be patient. Have some good needle nose pliers so you can fish the darn thing out of there. I don't even know if it moves. I mean, this. So. I don't know if I'm gonna really use that hanger. I guess once you start, when you apply pressure to the uh, to this hanger here.
my hands are probably in the way here. I'm sorry about that. It's just hard to film and, and do all of this. I don't know, it's in there, so <laughs> I guess we'll have to go with that. Now filming this part is gonna be really impossible. The idea is to hold the, um, the needle closed. So you can actually measure the um, the angle for the uh, for the float. Now all of these rebuild. Where am I? Okay, here, I, here it is. Uh, all these kits will come with a uh, with a little plastic uh, roller, which you want to use to. Uh, to determine the uh, height. This is on 30 seconds here. So I'm gonna use this. And again, you know, there's no way for me to uh, to film all this properly. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and do that off camera. And uh, I'll share any, any, any things I, I notice or I learn while I'm doing this again. I've done it before. So here, so I'm measuring this. I'm using this little machinist ruler to push gently. You don't want to overdo it. And with my finger, I'm holding the clip. So I know that the uh, needle is seated properly. And miraculously, the hanger is still there. So um, I'm holding that. And then from what I've seen, again, I kind of crafted this little um, measuring device for myself and I have it at 15, 30 seconds here. And based on what I've seen, and again, I'm, this is just my own research. Don't take that to the bank. I'm right there. I had to bend it a little bit, a couple times. So, Again, I don't know if the measurement should be from from this point and out how far. And, uh, and even at this point, it's pretty darn close to that. So I'm just going to go with that. I um, Just from looking at it, it looks like it should have and a fuel before it was really high, which I do not think is what you want any more than you want it to be so low that it's, it's not gonna allow hardly any fuel to go in the in the bowl. So again, these are just my sort of experiments, I guess you could call them. But um, hey, I um. It's kind of hard sometimes to find just the right information. And when you do, sometimes little details like where you measure from are not there. So again, this is pretty much a trial, trial and error kind of process for most of us. Okay. Okay, so after reading the, uh, the worksheet, it says that to measure the right float height, you have to go back 3 sixteenths of an inch from the toe, I assume it's the very front of the float itself. And from the casting, you want to have the, uh, and again, you don't want to, Put too much pressure on these things and I'm right there after making another tiny little adjustment so I think I got it right based on the uh, information 
And I'm going to try to do a close up for you so you can see. If I put a little bit of pressure on the on the needle and hold the clip. Let me try to do it from a better angle here. So that would be closed. So again, I'm not saying that this is 100% correct, but I think, rather hope, I, um, I did it right. Okay, so I'm ready to start putting this thing back together. I have the spring here for the power piston. Before I do that, I think I need to do the insert, yes. That's why it's a good idea to have that uh, reassembly sequence handy. So everything is uh, float, um, needle, everything is back in place. This little insert just drops in there. Now this part is um, super tricky because these have to line up with the with the uh, jets and um, again I'm gonna have to get in there with a flashlight you want to be careful because you don't want to bend these things so and of course it helps if you're doing this the right way see there's there's no way to um, Get those jets I mean the uh, the rods into the jets just by without trying to look in there so let me do that and I'll be back in a sec okay, once you get these metering rods situated with a small screw flat screwdriver you want to push the, um, the power piston retainer back in place and make sure that the, uh, the metering rods are working as intended. Okay. So next, we're gonna install this, this gasket. Again, you have the uh, choke lever, so make sure you do that. Very carefully, you want to slide this back around the um, Piston. Next is going to be the uh, accelerator. The accelerator pump. And the spring is in there. So this one just slides in there. This is kind of awkward, but it is what it is. Okay, so next is the, <coughs> the air horn. This one is a little tricky because you have a lot of little tubes and uh, you also have the choke lever. So just take your time. Here's the 
choke lever. Accelerator, pump is in place. Looking good. And then we're gonna start installing the, um, the screws. Want to get these in place and started. You don't want to cross thread anything here, so just just take it easy and uh, should go back together without any problems. If you start, if you have to start forcing things, stop. You're doing it wrong. So, next we have the other seven screws. We have the shield that goes back here. And remember, you don't want to over tight these, these screws. Again, they're all somewhat tight, but if you don't want to overdo it, just get them snug in there. That's all that's necessary. go around the um, tidying a couple times little by little gets it all nice and, and done
That's it. Next, I'm going to reinstall the lever here. We have the uh, secondary metering rods next. These just drop in place. Again, you do not want to over tighten this tiny little screw back here. Want to be be gentle with it. Always use the right the right tool, the right screwdriver. That's it. And last. Not last really, but we have the uh, the choke on the diaphragm. This guy goes here. started there's not a lot of room sometimes here but um Once you get these started, shouldn't be a problem. And the reason I, I did this um, while I was installed is because of of the um, of the clamp. There's very little room in there to uh, to get it um, in place. That's it. And last, not least, is the air cleaner, air filter assembly stud.
And that's that, as I say. Ready to go back in the car. Well, so much for being done. Just realized. I need to I'm gonna reinstall this. Sometimes you wanna. All right, so everything is back together. And the uh, car hasn't been started in a few days. We'll see what happens. Very little fuel there in the bowl, of course. But um, we'll see, it starts. And also I'll check for leaks. that that's why you always check all right so again
right. It's idling at about 800, which is okay. Anywhere, anywhere between 750 and 850, I guess it's okay. And, um, of course, temperature is not, it's not up to where it needs to be yet. One thing I wanted to show you here is what happens over the years when people are careless about what they use for removing uh, parts and bolts and nuts and all of that. They get chewed up like that. And uh, the only solution here is to remove the, the line and replace it. And uh, I'm gonna do that one of these days. But for the time being, everything is, is working well. And as you saw, I didn't remove the, um, the fuel filter because it was not necessary. But everything is reconnected properly. Hoping that there are no leaks. I even replaced the uh, base gasket and um, the other one was getting a little bit old and tired, so it was time. So I'm gonna reinstall the uh, air cleaner assembly and, um, and see about um, letting, letting the car get up to operating temperature. And then I'm gonna maybe tweak the, um, the idle a little bit Get it, get it, I like it at around 850 because I do not have a, um, an idle stop for the uh, AC. So um, when I turn on the AC, which is most of the time, it idle, idles at about 650-ish, 700, which is okay, but uh, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna tweak it a little more and see what happens. And uh, hopefully this, um, this new, newer, uh, it's brand new, but it's the newer design. Uh, needle seat is gonna help with the uh, hot starting issue, which is better because I reseal the well plugs. But even so, there's still a little bit of kind of hard starting when it's, when it's hot. So we'll, I'll keep an eye on it and see what happens, but um, let me uh, throw these things back on it and um, we'll try it again. pretty well I uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna warm it up for a little bit I'm gonna take it around the the uh, neighborhood a couple of times and then I'm gonna tweak the uh, the idle set it at about 850 and then test it again a, a few times down the road with the um, pandemic thing that is going on because I don't want a lot of people out and uh, I've been staying home. So, 
you know, there's a lot of little projects that I'm going to be tackling in the next uh, week or so. I still have to do a few things as far as the uh, uh, the rear wheel well. I did one back maybe going on two years now ago. So I have to finish the, uh, the right side uh, rear wheel well. I want to do that and, and recode it and all of that. And then again, I'm going to keep tweaking the uh, the motor, see what happens, or rather the carburetor, and uh, just to get it run the best I can, and hopefully these changes will actually help. So I'll just post whatever happens, good or bad or indifferent, I'll, I'll just let you guys know. All right, till the next one.